Sorry, I had to stop because of my puppy barking. Meek. Okay. So she asked her, how old were you? Me, just a helpless baby. My mom barely rescued me in the time. She pulled me from my burning crib and raced out of our flaming village, leaving a trail of fire all the way down the mountains as my arms burned to a crisp. They looked like two pieces of bacon by the time we got to the village hospital. Another kid standing nearby. Cooked or uncooked? So I kind of was a little trauma. So I kind of traumatized her and had to have a meeting with my parents and a teacher later about my story. My parents squinted their eyes and pursed their lips and nodded their heads as the teacher told them. Mm, they even told another child that her arms burned off in a wildfire in the mountains of Tanzania. She peered at them over her glasses, frowning. She also mentioned something about bacon. I had never seen any I had never seen such serious looks serious looks on my parents' faces before, like they were concentrating so hard on being serious their heads might explode if they blinked. They said seriously they would talk to me about it and shook the teacher's hand seriously as they walked out of school. But I could tell they weren't mad because all the way home one of them would softly snort and then the other would giggle and then the other would shake from laughing but trying not to laugh out loud, and on and on it went all the way home. They later told me just to be truthful, so I didn't upset any other kids, and I did for a long time, but then one day in fifth grade, we had a new kid come to our school. I had gone to the same school since kindergarten, so all my friends knew I was just born with no arms. When I sat down at lunch with the kids, he said, Whoa! What happened to your arms? All of my friends were looking at me. And what can I say? It exploded out of me and overfilled like an overfilled water balloon. I told him the crazy story about how I had rescued a puppy that had been tied to the train tracks just in time before a train nearly ran over it. Just in time for the puppy. But not for my poor flattened arms. You should have seen the look on the kid's face. Priceless. My best friend, Emily, burst out laughing, and my friend, Kayla, spit chocolate milk across the table. The new kid realized it was just a joke and started laughing, too. Pretty soon, everyone was constantly asking me, Hey, Avon, which arms go? And then I would have a new story to tell. Over time, my stories got more and more ridiculous. Alligator wrestling in the Everglades in Florida, freak roller coaster accidents, skydiving trips gone wrong, I made my stories as ridiculous as possible so people would always know I was joking. I grew up with these kids. I never felt out of place or anything like that. My armlessness wasn't strange or weird to them because, like I said, I had always gone to the same school. I never imagined my parents would make me leave. I never thought they would make me move all the way to Arizona and go to a school right after starting eighth. Great. Then again, I never imagined I would save the Old West, perform for an audience in the desert, and solve a mystery. You'd be surprised at all I am capable of, though, even without arms. And that is chapter one. So take out your paper, your or the, either the app or just regular paper. Draw what you visualized. And then post it to Google Classroom, and then we'll do read chapter two. Maybe I'll have a different look then. Bye, guys.